اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء وعز المرسلین حبیبی الہ العالمین ابی القاسم المصطفی محمد وعلى آل بیتہ الطیبین الطاہرین المنتجبین واللعن الدائم على اعدائہم اجمعین من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين آمين رب العالمين In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, all praises be to Him. Everlasting and omniscient He is. We begin in His name and we send our peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his holy household in our everlasting damnation upon the enemies of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Amin Rabb al my dear brothers and sisters, I begin with the greeting of Islam and I say Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings be upon you, wherever you may be, wherever you may be watching right now. Either you are still fasting, or either you are in your iftar, or either post iftar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you during these holy and sacred nights of Shahar Ramadan al-Mubarak. And we begin, of course, our fourth episode into the series of discussion and commentary on the sacred sermon, the prophetic sermon of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And we ended the last episode by talking about the first important lesson that we ought to take which is the immortal message of the Prophet. And the fact is that the hadith of the Prophet, like the Quran, is eternal and immortal. And there are lessons that we can learn from them, from the hadith of the Prophet and from the Quran, periodically and yearly, and the lessons do not end. And as we also said on how grave and important is for our communities in the big picture and in the smaller picture ourselves how we ought to take heed and hold on to the Quran and Sunnah especially in the sacred month. Now the second lesson that we ought to take from this sermon and we can take this lesson by analyzing the sermon and the time of the sermon and we said, and we give a preview in the last episode, we said that the most important lesson behind this sermon, uh, sorry, the, the lesson that we will, we said that the lesson that we will speak about is the lesson of time, the importance of time, and the importance of choosing the appropriate time, my dear brothers and sisters. When you read the sermon of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, when you read the hadith of Rasulullah, you will find that the khutbah, the sermon, the language used in the sermon, we dictate and we conclude from it that the khutbah was delivered near the end of Sha'ban, marking the beginning of Ramadan, the language used in the khutbah. Because the way Rasulullah begins the sermon, he says to him, he says to the people addressing the people, he says to them, Ya ayyuhannas qad aqbala ilaykum shahrullahi Until the end of the sermon. O oh, people and the month of Allah has approached. It is nearing, it is coming near, it is just around the corner. It is just above, it is coming just over the horizon. So we understand from this that the, the the time of this khutbah was delivered near the end of the month of Sha'ban, the last three days, for example, of Sha'ban, we can say, last couple of days before the month of Ramadan comes, or the, the last three days before the arrival of the month of Ramadan. Meaning what? We learn from this khutbah the importance of what? Of choosing the appropriate time. Specifically, in this lesson, we learn choosing the appropriate time when it comes to your khitab. Meaning what? Choosing the appropriate time to address a specific topic, a specific issue. 
there are topics, there are issues, there are matters, there are discussions that have their specific time slot. And there is a better reaction, both emotionally, both physically and mentally, when a said topic is delivered and addressed at a specific time slot. Now, we learn from this, for example, now imagine if the Prophet spoke to the Muslims about the fada'il and the merits of Shahar Ramadan in Shahar Rajab. Or he did so in the month, for example, of any other month. Even if he did it in the beginning of Sha'ban. The tafa'ul. We say the al-tafa'ul, right? Uh, the the sort of reaction that you would get from the Muslims in Medina, in Mecca, in general, you would get from the Muslims wouldn't be as strong as if it was days. It's almost like a shock value. You add a shock value because closer to an event. Reading, for example, the 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 different conquests. Because in this month, for example, there are many events that happen connect with these events for example by reading about the events during their specific time that they have been mentioned what do we what this how does this apply to us it applies to us because my dear brothers and sisters sometimes sometimes our community our brothers and sisters really do not take time into account when it comes to specific issues right when it comes to, for example, when we say, oh, make sure during this time of COVID, for example, to check up on your fellow brothers and sisters, those, for example, who are suffering from, from anxiety, those who are some suffering from depression, those who are suffering from mental illness, but then you find that the brother or sister comes and they ask the wrong question. We have that, and that's, that's a problem that's, that's apparent and, and very clear in our communities. The wrong questions are a- there are asked, or no questions are asked. We have min min We have the extremes on both sides. We have an extreme. We have a community that doesn't ask, that neglects, but a community that asks asks the wrong question. When you see somebody suffering and somebody that is sad and somebody that is going under depression, you don't say, "Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? I heard you know you're not feeling well. I'm checking up on you." You don't you don't bring up the topic. You don't say, "Oh, you're depressed. I'm checking up on you." That's not how it works. You just merely call up your brother and you you speak to them as you would speak to anybody else. If they open to you, they open up to you. Right? It's important. This is very very important because sometimes we ask the wrong questions and we only add salt on top of the wound. Because not everybody is open. Right. That's why there are professionals out there that people go to and they speak to. They're mental health professionals, right? And unfortunately, speaking as well, from the Islamic side of things, we have neglected this. It's an issue in our communities, and it's not talked about a lot. But the message that I'm trying to relay here is: choose the appropriate time to speak or address about the specific issues that you want to talk about. When it comes to, for example, mental health, of course, when I mean choose the appropriate, there's always an appropriate time to talk about that topic. There's never not a good time to talk about that topic. But when I choose, say the appropriate time, choose the appropriate questions and the appropriate remarks when you're speaking to that fellow brother and sister who may be suffering. And don't be that person to bring down that fellow brother and sister and say, oh, you're not faithful, you're not what? Believe in Allah. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. You take baby steps towards everything. <laughs> Slow and steady wins the race, as uh, wins the race, as we know. That is the, f- the famous proverb, right? Slow and steady wins the race. Not you jumping to conclusions about how somebody is feeling. So, when it comes to these issues, choose the appropriate questions in the appropriate times. When it comes to other issues, this is important. During, for example, the months of Muharram, during, for example, the other sacred nights. And the same thing comes to other events, right? It's important that either you're a speaker. If you're not a speaker, you're just a member of the family and you and the family have 
important you have sorry not important but you have family gatherings for example you have family gatherings and during these family gatherings for example every thursday night if there is an event that's going on choose and talk about that event and in general take time time itself is sacred time is sacred do not neglect time choosing the appropriate time for everything by the way this applies to even like if you go back to the history of, of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, during his beginning message for example when it came to the idols of Quraysh he didn't just jump towards the idols of Quraysh and demolish them he waited for the appropriate time through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his guidance time is very important and we say this because we jump to conclusions a lot we jump to conclusions we always jump to conclusions when it comes to being judgmental we jump to conclusions because we see somebody for example going through some things and we assume things about them and we we always neglect the fact that time is a creation of Allah and time will judge us time will testify on our behalf so my dear brothers and sisters from the khutbah of rasulullah we know this choosing the appropriate time of deliverance in order to to address the community or whoever you're speaking to whoever it may be in order to get the most benefit from your speech from your address and in order to be the most helpful in the, sen in, the, in the sense of when we're speaking about, for example, that individual who may be suffering, who needs help, in order to be the most helpful brother and sister, or in the sense of the larger community, for example, as a speaker, as an orator, as a writer, choosing the appropriate time in order to get the, 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 the largest amount or the most shock value. Because we see the event of uh, the event of uh, of Ramadan and three days before that, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa begins his speech and he addresses the people and it has a there's a different feeling. It's like when we when we look at Muharram, for example, when we look at the other events that happen from Ghadir Khum, for example, when we revive Ghadir Khum, when we revive Al Mubahala, when we revive the day of Khaybar, the day of Uhud, speaking about it on the day of the event is different. And that is why we see that it's not just in, in, in the Islamic heritage where these events are honored. We see in other faiths, for example, other governments, for example, events that occurred are always revived. and re Because there's always lessons in this. There's always more emotion in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is more... There's just so much more when you're, when you're speaking about... You know, because we know that Aba Abdullah alayhi salam and his incident, as an example, this tragedy of Aba Abdullah alayhi salam is forever eternal and forever there is a fire in our hearts that causes a burn and that makes us cry, and makes us weep. Ana qatid al abara, right? I'm the prince of tears and the prince of martyrs. Nobody remembers me except that they shed a tear, correct or not? But now. No, but when it like we, we even during these nights, for example, during the nights of Imam Ali alayhi salam in Shah Ramadan, we remember about Abdullah alayhi salam. But there is so much more emotion that is spilled on the day of Ashura and the nights of Muharram and Safar because there's more tafa'ul, there's more emotion, the heart is more, the heart is moving more during those nights than it does during any other nights. Time is very important, my dear brothers and sisters. And that's the lesson that we learn here. Choosing the appropriate time. And at the same time, my dear brothers and sisters, choosing the appropriate time also means what? Means managing your time. Managing your time and also knowing that time is sacred. Time is grand. Time isn't a matter to overlook. My dear brothers and sisters, time is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Both space and time are a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why we will be asked about the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and by the way like you you can you can almost according to, I'll read the ayah in the Quran of course but you can summarize your entire life as time life is basically time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see the advent of death and life is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us and he is the one who created both life and death meaning what? From the beginning of our life until the end of our life. It's basically, Allah is basically telling you, your life and death is one long strand, which is time. Life and death, and that's it, you end. And then Allah says, Allah created life and death in order to in see that which from amongst you, who from amongst you has the best amal. Ayyukum ahsanu amala. He may try you, sorry, he may try you with trials to see who from amongst you has the best deed. And by the way, this is a very important matter as well. The Quran here is trying to inform us, Allah is trying to inform us that it's not about my dear brothers and sisters. It's not about the quantity. It's about the quality. It's not about praying 200 ruk'ah of salah. It's about praying two ruk'ah of salah with ma'rifah, with knowledge. It's not about fasting six months, two months, one month for istihbaban, for example. No, it's about fasting two months, uh, two days, for example, istihbaban, tatawa'an lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But having understanding what truly means it, mean, it means to fast and being a good neighbor and being a good son, being a good daughter. Fasting two months and two months. For example, tatawa'an and istihbaban, a recommended two months fast, for example, and praying the night and day. But then you come with disrespect and the neglect and bad akhlaq. You speak ill of your parents, you speak ill of your brothers and sisters in Islam. That is why it's not about the number. Surprisingly and sadly, we're, we are a society that deals with the numbers. We are a society now that we look at the followers. We look at how big the number is. Don't judge anybody by the number. You judge by the speech that's being uttered. You judge by their amal. Allah says, لِيَبْلُوكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Who has the best deed, not deeds. The best of deed. Whatever that deed may be. That's why when we look at those pious individuals, in the ahadith, we have many ahadith. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the prophets of Banu Israel, tells them, I wish to meet your abid, for example, who was one of these abid. And then he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, go to the following lands, the lands of Moses. And then the, he goes and he sees somebody who is, who, is, who is praying and one who has riches. And then he goes on to another person until he, short, long story short, until he meets a person who was a slave, who was a servant, who takes care of the person that this prophet met before. But it turns out that this person was a pious, ser pious servant. He did his salah, correct? But then he was also good to his master. He was good to the crops around him. He was good to the animals. And he is known as the Abid, the slave of Allah, the worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not the other individuals who, on the outside, they're, they're, the superficially, they, they are abad. And we're not, we're not saying, by the way, that these weren't abad. They were abad. But subhanAllah, the servant, the one who has the lowest class amongst humanity, is the one who has the highest class and stature and merit in the eyes of the Almighty. Because my dear brothers and sisters, ahem mushay is having that status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having that status in the eyes of Allah super, supersedes and is better than any other status that one can have it is more grand and more magnificent 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is saying, I have created for you, I have created life and death. Everything is a trial from the beginning of life until the end. I'm trying to basically tell you, O oh, Ibadi, my slaves, how are you spending your time? How are you spending your youth? How are you spending your wealth? My slaves, he's saying, which of you has the best deed? Which of you has the best indeed? Which of you has the best amal? It's not about the quantity here. Allah is saying, how are you spending your time? That's why in the hadith, for example, that we read, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, peace and blessings be upon him, he says, لا تزول قدما قدم عبد يوم القيامة لا تزول meaning what? meaning the footsteps of the abid a slave of Allah on the day of judgment will not move not even a footstep he will not move forward not even a step it says حتى يسأل عن أربع until he or she is asked about four things until they are asked about four things. عن عمره فيما أفناه وعن شبابه فيما أبلا وعن ما له من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفقه وعن حبنا أهل البيت. Life, all of our life. This bala that Allah subhanahu wa ta talks about in the Quran, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. You can say is categorized into these four questions. Allah will ask about life. Sorry, Allah will ask subhanahu wa taala first things first foremost about yeah. Sorry, how how life was spent how the youth was spent, how the money was attained and where it was spent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask about حُبِّنَا أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ Again, the hadith reads. Let's read the exact translation here. I have it translated for you. A servant will be asked about four things on the day of judgment. Before they even lift one foot, they will be asked about life and how it was spent, youth and how it was worn, as in how it was worn out. How did you wear out your youth? How did you deteriorate your youth? Because at the end of the day, we're all growing old. We grow old. We deteriorate. We wear out, right? When your shabab period ends and you enter the, 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 the period of being an elder, correct? Here is how did you spend your youth? And youth can start from around six, seven years old, you can almost say. Six, seven years old, let's say, let's say the, the age of Balag. Let's say the age of Balag, the age of puberty. 12, 13 for boys, maybe it's six, seven, eight, nine for, eight to nine for, for, for the sisters, for the girls. How did you spend your youth from, from that age until the age of 30, for example? What did you give back? What did you do? Was it spent just all day long on, on, on watching series and movies? Did you spend it, for example, in something else that benefits humanity? Everything will be asked about, by the way. That is why I always say to always follow the hadith of Imam Ali alayhi salam. We'll get back to the, the hadith of Amir al muin alayhi salam, which says, Nadhumu umurakum. Organize your time. Before we go back to that hadith, let's end this. So we said, uh, and then wealth and how it was attained and how it was spent. Is your mal halal? And how? كَيْفَ أَنْفَقْتُ ذَلِكَ mal? How did you spend that money? Did you also spend it on halal or haram? And about our love. Now, apply this now to the hadith of Ali alayhi salam. نَظْضُمُوا أُمُورَكُمْ Divide and distribute your time. I'm not saying that it is haram to go and watch a movie or a series. 
I am not saying it's haram to go play sports, to go what, to play football, to read fictional books and so on. Nobody said it's haram. We're just saying have priority. Place the priority over a tafaqqah fi deen gaining more insight and knowledge. And leave a time slot. I mean, if you're watching a series on Netflix that spans 12 episodes and you want to binge watch it, why don't you put more pleasure into, into watching it and divide that time that you have for that show into 12 days. And instead of watching all 12 in one night, right, spend an hour, an hour of your time to open the Quran, for example. Read the ayah from the Quran as we said, the, 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 the lesson that we had last, the advice that we gave. Write a commentary. Find the hadith. Connect with a new hadith. Call up your friends and have a mubahatha. Have a discussion. Have a discussion during Shah Ramadan right now. Add, add a WhatsApp group. There are many brothers out there, mashallah, that have done this. They have, they have gathered WhatsApp groups in order to do discussion. Some of them are doing weekly Zoom meetings. Some of them are doing weekly Google Hangout meetings where they discuss Quran, they discuss modern topics, and just in general, converse amongst fellow brothers and sisters from Islam. The sisters are able to establish a sisterhood. The brothers are able to establish a brotherhood. And this is important. This is needed. Communities are built on the brotherhood and the sisterhood. Communities are built by the youth. They are not built by the elders. Why don't you take that same show that you're binge watching, for example? Inshallah, I mean, right now, actually, you can still do it right now, actually. There is, there is a, there's a Chrome extension that you can download called Netflix Party. Why don't you take a show that's beneficial, for example? Say you and your friends want to watch a show. Why don't you watch something together? Make it, make it fun. Make it, for example, guys, we're going to have a brother's night, for example, or a sister's night, where the first, uh, the first 25 minutes will be spent in uh, looking at an ayat from the Qur'an. Everybody shares an ayat from the Qur'an that had an effect on them, that benefited them in some way, right? And then the next 25 minutes... A group of sisters or brothers will also, between themselves, also begin to share on this Zoom or Google Hangouts meeting a hadith that inspires them or a historical event that inspires them from Al Muhammad, for example, from Rasulullah's lifetime. So that's that now we just had 25, 20, that's 50 minutes elapsed right now. 10 minutes, for example, to share any sort of wisdom that they may have, that they may have learned, or any lesson that they may have taken during their time, for example, in quarantine. That's one hour gone. And then for the next hour, for example, they can choose a show that they like, that is of course lawful, that they can watch together, or document anything, but use whatever technology we have to also, you will still be creating the atmosphere, but you're creating, of course, using social distancing. You're creating a safe atmosphere. And inshallah, when all this is over, you can take that atmosphere into the center, inshallah. You've already built a strong brotherhood. People check up on each other. Sisters call up each other. You're making use of your time, my dear brothers and sisters. Now, inshallah, we've come <coughs> to an end of this episode, inshallah, which is our fourth episode, correct? Now, you guys have to remind me, honestly, I'm losing it as well. Fourth episode, and inshallah, we will, of course, be talking about time more and more because you'll find that the khutbah of Rasulullah really does mention. <coughs> and in Ramadan, time is a very important topic to speak about. But the gist of the message today is, inshallah, understand that there is always an appropriate time for everything. And choosing the appropriate time is from the sunnah of the prophets and the imams, peace be upon them. And then also, and the second lesson from, from this discussion today from this episode is the importance to understand the importance of how grand time is and how heavy time is and that we will be asked about how our time was spent and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to see from us not a quanti quantity he does not want to see numbers he wants to see numbers that are of quality he wants to see numbers that have quality not numbers that have quantity my dear brothers and sisters I end on that note and I ask you for your forgiveness and I ask that you pray inshallah for the believers wherever they may be and, and inshallah they all return to their homes bi'idhnillah ta'ala safely 
and those who are ill from this virus and other ailments may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well give them good health and inshallah I ask you to pray for my parents inshallah and if you have time inshallah recited Fatiha for my dearest grandmother and grandfather and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all uh, during these sacred nights of Ramadan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm-hmm.